there was an infamous Nigel Lawson interview I've done on radio in which he made several inaccurate statements and the BBC didn't correct him. And Ofcom ruled that the BBC had been irresponsible and they needed to correct that in future. So I thought, right, I'm going to write to Ofcom, I'm going to give them a dossier of information of failings going back many years. And they said that you have got to go to the BBC with complaints that relate to the period after we took over responsibility of regulator, April 2017. So I went to the BBC and I've gave them three complaints that gave examples of three different areas of their failings. September 2017, there was the UN General, General Assembly meeting immediately after Hurricane Maria ploughed through the Caribbean. And it had been such a powerful hurricane season that speaker after speaker at the UN General Assembly said, this, you have got to stop emitting greenhouse gas emissions. We have got to tackle this problem of climate change. And they were desperate. And one speaker from uh, representing the Bahamas government said, what comes next? The entire evacuation of the whole Caribbean? None of that was reported. December 2017, another major conference set up by Emmanuel Macron, President of France, and uh, Theresa May went along to that, and it was called the One Planet Conference. And at that conference, Macron said to the world, and he wanted his message to go to the world, that if we don't tackle climate change, there will be billions of victims. He didn't say millions, he said billions of victims, not reported at all by the BBC. The United Nations Security Council had a special two-day conference on climate change, the security implications of climate change. That was held in July. BBC didn't report a word on that. September 2018, uh, the UN Secretary General issued a news release to all the news agencies around the world saying in a couple of days time I'm going to make a major announcement on climate change. And he delivered that speech and it warned of the fact that we're now approaching runaway climate change. And he said that this is a direct existential threat and we have to act now, not covered by the BBC. We know that there are these tipping points where albedo in the Arctic is warming the Arctic much more quickly than the, the greenhouse gas emissions that we put there. We know that these feedbacks have begun to appear, like methane beginning to bubble out melting permafrost. Now, because the BBC spends so much time allowing the climate change deniers like Nigel Lawson on the radio, it doesn't allow a voice to that group of scientists who are far larger in number, who say, no, this is an absolute crisis. We face an absolute crisis. We need to stop emitting greenhouse gas emissions now. We are on the cusp of runaway climate change. They exclude a vital part of scientific opinion that ought to have a voice. And they only um, balance a climate change denier against a mainstream uh, climate scientist. But this other group, which is large, excluded. So I saw somebody who looked like they were interested so I went up to him and I said, I would give you a leaflet, but I've run out. Can I tell you very quickly what we're doing? He said, I've seen the banners. I know what you're doing. I fully agree with what you're doing. Thank you very much. I am a BBC News producer. Our pension fund is almost fully invested in the city of London in oil and gas, uh, oil and coal, I think he said. And until we take our pension funds out of that, our hands are tied. Let me tell you where you need to direct this campaign. You need to direct it at a journalist called Simon Jack, who is the business editor at the BBC. This is a business story. This is all economics. Climate change is going to impose huge financial burdens. It's not just the fact we have to pay for adaptation, build seawalls, move houses further inland, abandon the coast. It's not just that. The UK is committed to paying loss and damage compensation to the poorest countries of the world that suffer the most. BBC never mentions that expense. The COP21 agreement, the Paris Climate Change Agreement, also commits wealthy countries to um, paying for negative emissions. Now, negative emissions technology is kind of unproven, but there are some things that are beginning to emerge. But that debt that's currently planned to be dumped on the next generation is about £125,000 per person. Now, if you add up negative emissions, adaptation, loss and damage, that completely destroys any argument for extracting any better fossil fuels from the ground, it completely destroys the economic arguments of fracking, and it completely destroys the economic arguments for expansion of aviation and Heathrow. And the BBC never touch it. They never put those questions to somebody who wants to expand Heathrow. They never put those questions to somebody who wants to start fracking. This is a bias in favour of polluting industry, and the public deserve better. How do you undo 20 years of harm? Because the public didn't realise 
just how bad climate change is. You couldn't really necessarily expect people to go out and demand from their politicians radical change now. Now this morning Fran Unsworth, the head of news and current affairs at BBC, has been out to me about this demonstration today and she's been very angry and saying, didn't you see what we did on the 8th of October? And I said, that's what you should be do doing all the time. Though all those previous major news stories you should have covered, but you didn't. And that's why we're here. And that's why we're going to Ofcom and that's why we're going to ask for change. A very simple action is just to simply write to Ofcom and say to them, John Fuller sent a dossier of evidence on the 10th of October to Ofcom. Please, would you now mount a thorough investigation into BBC's coverage of all news relating to climate change.